Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 440. Each week we uh, gather here to review the questions and answers given on, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's also a Google product expert in the uh, AdSense community. Masataki resides in Wimbledon, a suburb of London. Tim Capper is um, uh, CEO of onlineownership.com. Um, he's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Uh, Tim um, is a Google product expert on the Google My Business uh, community. And David Rosam is a leading internet marketer. He's based in West Sussex in the sunny south of the UK. Um, David can be found at davidrosam.com. And da da David da at Chameleon? No? David, David at davidrosam.com. Okay. All right. Um, we let's get on with our first one we've got nine questions uh, to, to look at tonight um number one is from uh, uh, demetrius maddox um that's a very good question he says what is the proper way to do internal linking You guys want to ask um, so that my home page and service pages get the most link juice possible. Um, I have a simple site structure, home page, two service pages, 20 plus blog posts, writing more, 40 location pages, a handful of other pages like an about page, contact page, etc. Am I siloing that the blog post for a particular service and then have only the top of service post pointing to the service page and then have the service page point to the home page or do all the blog posts point to the appropriate service page and then have the service page point to the home page or is there a better way to do this that I don't know and also what's the best way to optimize the blog post link ratio is if one external backlink per 500 words and only one internal link per post for example I think he's put a lot of effort into writing that question. Um, God, this this is a, another one of these these questions that has strange ideas in it, uh, like blog post link ratios that I've never heard of. Um, yes, um, I think there's a lot of overthinking going on here. Um, I think that you need to think about what people will want from your website and how they can get the information they need from it um and link uh link from one page to another page um because it makes sense um you also need to think about how you're dividing up your um your website um your service pages in this case oh, i'm sorry i should have read this um in more detail before i started uh, replying to this but um the um i felt i had to fill in the gap um so yes i think you're you're <laughs> there was silence i don't like silence <laughs> no the reason i disappeared for a second because freddie just came in he was covered in snow and i was like what the fuck and I yeah. left the back door open. It's just started snowing. <laughs> yeah, we, we've had hail. We've had hail um, about an hour ago. And now we've got bright sunshine. Yeah. Same here about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Yes. Um, so th think about the about what people want um, to, to, to find out. And, and just show them where that is. Um, so, so it's like... Um, 
I guess a really good way of looking at or thinking about internal linking is one, okay, firstly, you know, depending on what like your site is and your site or your theme would typically have internal linking uh, built within it. So that was what I mean. Um, you, you, let's say you're looking for, um, you know, a pair of jeans uh, or even Amazon, whatever. You go there and you've got your top line navigation. So it's jeans, male, female, tops, male, female. Yeah, you know what I mean? Or it could be female and then all the things in it. So you've got your categories, right? You then, um, uh, and of course, with breadcrumbs, you've probably seen them at the top. Those are internal linking. So Google knows where these or what kind of structure this is following in. So it's male, jeans, blue, blue jeans. Um, and then you, you select one that you think you like, right? From, from your the landing page, the, yeah? And then you go into something where it will give you the product, et cetera, et cetera. And then below it, there's things like you may also like, right? This is internal linking all the time, right? So this pair of jeans will actually, is actually very similar to this pair, this pair, and this pair. Now, if you were, for example, in an old style, like literally, li literally just say, I don't know, this thing's been cobbled together. This is where, for example, you could add in HTML on that product page, you may also like this link, this link, this link. So this is internal linking, okay? It's by linking through to things which are in that same subtopic and broader topic. So you've got these genes going, you may also like these ones, these ones, these ones. But within your breadcrumb structure, at the top there, it's still saying blue jeans within the genes, within the males, within the fashion section, right? All So it's all within, yeah, all of these links are in the same uh, thingy. Uh, Sila, whatever you want to call it. Now, if you go into your content section um you've got a thing what what why is there reverb oh um then if you go into let's say you produce a piece of content you are typically putting that into a category that makes sense to what you're writing about and a lot of templates nowadays will say these are the, the these are our you know l latest five newest articles and these are related now within that article you've obviously got related ones which are automatically produced by your theme if they don't have you could add them at the end of the in in html at the end of the thing so you're internally linking for the user to what they are but within that content you may reference a product and that's when you can do an internal link from whatever you call, like it may not be the exact name, it could be partial. So it could be uh, these uh, skinny, the, the, you know, skinny blue jeans worn by uh, whoever, yeah, X, Y. <laughs> yeah, I don't do skinny, man. I can't fit into skinny. I haven't fit into skinny in 10 freaking years. But anyway. Skinny blue jeans, as seen on the catwalk by whoever, those skinny blue jeans could be linked to your either the actual product, those skinny blue jeans, which are the exact same ones, or you could link it to the skinny blue jeans category, right? So, so the, that's about internal linking. So if you think about it from the way of firstly making sense to a user, but of course... Uh, and most themes have these already built into it, but you could do it uh, manually. And like a lot of, I think I still work on like five or six client sites, which don't have these within the themes that the site was built in. So yeah, I still do um, literally an HTML, you know, like uh, related articles at the bottom of a piece of content to 
the related pieces of content that relate to it. Within those, if there's something additional in there, then there's an internal link going to whatever whatever may be uh, relevant to the user. Um, so so think of it like that. Don't 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 think of it. You know, uh, like internal linking is very very beneficial. Um, one because search engines tend to can understand a lot more of what's going on or what the topic or the the, the, the subtopics and, and 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 it gets a better understanding but um you often see a lot of people getting carried away when you get a new client site and you go into either a, a category page and they freaking link in in the body in the in the copy back to the home page and i'm like yeah but your logo is linking back to your home page if you've got breadcrumbs everything goes back to your home page you know your top line navigation on every single page is back to uh, the home page why are you linking back to the home page um or jim we've like what yeah i know i know i'm just trying to get it back yeah select it there (laughs) i can even see it in your screenshot just select it man (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, the, the screenshots my grandchildren they're, they're, they're very very photogenic yeah so 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 this is the thing it's like don't willy-nilly chuck stuff in you know if you do a piece of content that is is really good uh, you've let's say this is just a blog article um it's on something that pertains to the site but it may not necessarily it may pertain to the the whole theme of the site like i don't know uh new legislation on something which doesn't actually warrant you to link through to a product page but it's legislation around the whole kind of business like um uh, how do i swipe down right. um so so let's say it's something like like i don't know let's say you're a uh something to do with gas pipes right and you sell gas pipes so the whole thing is e-commerce so a lot of your content is guides on gas pipe fittings how to select the right gas pipe fitting how to yeah but some new legislation just came in about um I don't know. There's something about new gas flow, whatever, right? Which makes sense to users uh, because, you know, you might as well keep your customers informed because this may or may not impact their purchasing decisions later on. But you can't actually link to a gas pipe because this is about the legislation around gas, okay? Which may or may not, when it comes in, actually affect the type of pipes you will use. So in this instance, it doesn't actually make sense to interlink from there, or you can't. So there's no point shoving a, a link in there, right? Because it just, it, it, it's not going to make sense. Even if the user clicks on it and they land on a gas pipe, they're like, what the hell are you talking about? Um, and in that instance, you, you know, um, you don't have to, in, you, you don't have to interlink to it if, if you're not going to. Do you, do you see what I mean? If, you, if, it, if it doesn't make sense. Um, so yeah, look, interlinking is very, very good for search engines, especially as a site grows and becomes larger and larger and larger. It's very good to get a user around your site and it's very good for search engines to understand what products you have, especially deeper down the funnel, um, uh, and things like this, um, so yeah you know but there are things where you don't need to just interlink for the sake of interlinking um and of course sometimes um some people get fixated on um a particular page they've created that they want to rank or they think should rank however search engines for that particular query keep displaying another page and people get fixated on this thing that 
instead of actually working with a search engine because a search engine seeing something instead of working with it understanding why the search engine is doing that and either modifying or incorporating into that page they think we're just going to create more stuff more content and interlink to the page that we want to rank rather than the one that the search you see so sometimes things like that it's just ridiculous you know you should understand how things are being displayed and work with it and benefit it and update on it and capitalize on it uh, rather than trying to literally use brute force with your internal linking to force something uh, that almost never works um, so yeah brilliant Tim brilliant I I'm gonna move on now because uh, a little bit further into the run list we've got another question on internal linking or at least I if I, um, unless I'm going crazy, there is anyway. No, there is, but it's slightly different. Yeah. All right, let's um, move on to number two on our run list, and that's from Robbie King. It's titled Ensure All Internal Links Link uh, Directly to Indexable Pages and Why. Uh, Robbie King also said, so in a, in a SEMRAS blog, I read recently it says ensure all internal links link directly to indexable pages. Why? Because there are pages that I want to link internally to that. I can't see why I want Google to index, like my Contact Us page or even my About page. Well, firstly, your Contact Us page should be indexed. Your About page should be indexed. Okay? But you wouldn't internally link to it necessarily unless there was a specific uh event feature you had in a bit of um uh you had just put out an event uh up and coming uh on the 3rd of march uh we've just launched this new thing to be added to our you know to for more information contact us and you internally link to it yeah what what they're talking about is like that that article is written purely with seo in mind um because of course why link to a page which you're hiding from search engines in that sense and there could actually be reasons and i do it in some instances so and i'll give you those instances so in some bits of content uh which you don't want indexed so for example uh well and, and everything will vary but in this one case um uh it's a it's a property site and of course um tags are a good way for users to navigate for specific features within a property right but having all these different tags is not necessarily always good because a lot of them can at times be interpreted and cannibalize your actual main category of the properties rather than the uh, and they're rather than the tag right so the tag is good for the user specifically for this piece of thing but bad for search results right so it's no index and it's interlinked to because if you if there's a specific piece of content and it makes sense for the user to have a check on this specific little, you know, this, 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 yeah, a link to it because it's good for the user, but it's a no index page because it's not great for the search engines. Um, because it's either way too thin, it's not ready. You're still working on it, but it's good for the user in that context. Um, so no, you don't have to always ensure, but that was written and SEMrush is about SEO. So they are going to say to you, link to indexable pages if you are internally linking, right? Um, because that makes that makes sense. Uh, you know, the person should have gone into the nuance of where you can actually link to something which makes sense for the user. Um, but that was written purely for SEO or SEO in mind, and, and therefore that's why they said only link to index indexable pages. But it they, they, they shouldn't have specifically read that because people take it as face value. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? 
All right, let's roll on down to number three on our run list. Robbie King again, the question about content strategy. Um, should all content either be a piece of pillar slash cornerstone content or fall under a piece of uh, pillar slash cornerstone content? Or is it okay if there are some blogs that stand alone? Currently uh, planning things out and whilst there are Whilst there are many blogs I can see working as part of a topic cluster, I can see a few being standalone pieces. Well, uh, unfortunately, all blog pages are essentially standalone pieces in a sense, but they will have, you know, you will have categorized them. Um, so if it's one singular piece in one single category, then we could essentially say that's standalone. Um, but essentially nothing standalone in that sense. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Look, if, if, if you've got a piece of content that is relevant, that, that makes sense, that your users should know about, and it's going to be in a content that is almost never used. You may only find another something happen in two years time. Why not? Yes, it makes sense. Um, but essentially all of your stuff is going to be in some way, shape or formed all working together because that piece of content will be, you know, sort of semantically understood to be part of the site, the business, or whatever the hell they're talking about. Um, so even if it is standalone, it's not really standalone. But yeah, don't like not publish something because you're scared that it's not going to fit into something. Yeah, focus more on what you're writing, not not uh, how it looks. Okay, let's move on. Uh, this one from ADD, uh, it's indexed, though blocked by robots text. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I have a search option of my company's site. Uh, as the URL slash search is a 404, unless you made a search. I blocked it from being indexed, but because the form on all sites does lead to this page, it is visible by Google, and I got a Google Search Console error. Indexed, though blocked by um, robots text. What is the solution in this case? It's a simple one. Who wants that? <laughs> so is he saying he's blocked the search the search query? Yeah, he, he's he's saying that um, um, he he has um, oh yeah, I've lost my train of thought. Yeah, so basically he's saying that anything. So he's literally anything that uses the search bar comes up as a 404. And he's blocked that from. Uh, I mean, if it says blocked by robots TXT, that must mean that he's blocked it using robots TXT rather than yeah. in no index. Um, don't use robots TXT for this purpose. Um, if the page returns 404, then it will fall out of the index. I, th I, I get the, I, it's kind of reading that. I think he wanted to prevent someone doing a search and not showing any products, like, and only allowing searches that have a product rather than just showing the user sorry we don't we don't have anything that matches that 
please try again or refine your query. Not sure. Um, I, I love Mark, Michael uh, Martinez's um, answer. See, this isn't the problem requiring a solution. Google is telling you uh, it knows about the URL but won't crawl it. Well, in this instance, count because it's blocked by robots. Yeah, yeah. So they're literally telling you what you've done. Yeah. Like you did it. They're just saying, "Hey, we know about this, but we're not we're not crawling it because you're telling us not to." Yeah, and I'm not so sure using Canonical will be helpful. I think that com that will complicate matters more. Yeah, why would you canonicalize a page that you've txt? Yeah, it just doesn't make it doesn't doesn't make sense. I mean, if there's nothing there and shouldn't be, um, then return a four four. Yeah. Well. I think we've covered it. Any objections? Okay. Number five on our run list. Where does the video schema markup play into all of this? Um, it's from Alexandra Cote. Um, he or she, or I think it's she, um, uh, said, hey, I'm, I'm pl planning on listing some webinars videos on our website. Would you create independent pages for every video where you embed the video or opt for something like this example? Um, and she gives a link, yeah, https full colon slash slash directiveconsulting.com slash resources slash category slash video. Where does the video schema marker play into all this? Thanks a lot. Uh, well, that's not the individual. Oh, you mean just video? Calling it just individual video. Well, in the video schema, Jesus, I haven't used I haven't used video schema in ages. Let's quickly check what schema.org goes. Uh, I'm sure you. I th I'm sure you do. Um, the actual page it's on the i'm actual, sure yeah i think you're right tim you do the page it's on and then you do from where it was embedded don't you also like if it wasn't uh yeah it's a long time here but i'm let me I, i'm check. pretty sure that it's a page by page thing it wouldn't make any sense otherwise would it mm. otherwise you'd just be saying all oh, there's some video on this site somewhere One thing that strikes me is why would you want to put the video schema there? Presumably because you want Google to find this stuff, um, in which case I would put a transcript of the uh, of the video um, on the page. Yeah, or at least a bare minimum an introduction. Yeah. I think the, you know, the, the video schema is, is less important than the, the indexable uh content do i remember something um i well, didn't i see something that video schema was <laughs> not showing as intended in Mm. yeah but i mean as far as i know so your each video like should be on its own page with its own url because uh 
you know your your url is going to be to um your content url is going to be to the content of that page you're going to have an embed url which whichever you're using you may be using vimeo you may be using youtube you might be whatever um so you need to tell that's where it's going to be um things like that uh but the one thing you know I, i'm quite skeptical uh knowing like I'll tell you what, let me do a search for how to do video schema and let's see if actually any videos turn up. How to do video schema. And we'll do a quick little test here right now. Okay, so we've got three, right. One out of the three, only one already is only using schema. Yeah, and the other two aren't. I can see that straight away because of the key moments. Um, let me check that link, that thing. Okay, so this one is pure from, ah, oh, fucking wicks. Excuse my language. <laughs> oh shit, talking about wicks. Um, Wix actually evacuated that offered all that because they've got offices in Kiev. Um, oh, and they offered all of their staff, uh, to evacuate them. And I think they evacuated a thousand staff and their families, which is pretty cool for a company. I'd like to see them all working at the same time, yeah. Uh, so yeah i'm like mm. uh. we're running the same on this one yeah we're running the same look i'm i'm not entirely sure but you know it should be on your own page and then of course if you're going to you know, ideally, um, ideally, you want to obviously be using, you know, a obviously from an embed. It's going to have its own URL. It's going to have its own embed. Uh, for, you know, you're going to include that. And as David said, you know, if you really want traction on some stuff, either do a transcript of it, um, do a full transcript. That really works well. Um, or, uh, you know, if you're not going to do an entire transcript because it's two hours long, do the first intro section of it, you know, um, of, of whatever it was. Yeah, it well, those, these days, um, with AI uh, being, uh, yeah, advances in, in that, uh, are such that, you know, really it's a simple thing to work, get all of the text out, out of any video. Very little work. Right, let's roll on to number six on our run list. Um, it's titled, no, Now, How Natural Does That Look? Um, and Mike Metcalf um, is there. And Mike said, uh, with so many Slack groups um, getting started these days, I guess he means, and the same people being invited to them, so you end up, in 10 different groups uh, with the same people. Anyway, all everyone wants uh, is a link exchange, not necessarily, Mike. Um, anyway, now, how natural does that look? You can't always get uh, link exchanges, right? Um, <laughs> you should be doing all the things. A guest post, are you kidding? This is a bit of a good um broken link building yes true etc uh, and thoughts please yeah i would totally like on the on the flip side i'm going to say uh google has infiltrated that slack channel um 
I don't know if you remember. I don't know how long you've been around, Mike. But uh, shit, what was? Uh, there was a thing run by. Uh, was it Anne Smarty? What was that site? It's still up. Oh god! It was a content site. It, no, it was like a literally an exchange. Um, um my blog you that's it and, then there was, and, and now then there's also viral content b so my blog you right so um so this uh, became very popular quickly because Anne is quite a well-known um marketer seo um it became very popular and of course when things like this become popular google wants to know what's going on and of course because it was a website they could quite easily uh, log in and uh, see who was trading what um it typically wasn't trading it was like hey guys um this is the piece of content that i've just published um does this fit anyone's and you would you know obviously people would register their clients within certain categories and then if somebody had something that worked with that then you could hit them up obviously there's still like no it's not an automated link thing it's like you would hit them up and if it fitted you know you could do something with them um but of course google didn't like this and although there was no uh, dodgy links from my blog you google like manually penalized them and then because they had access to the site because it's a website and it was a membership and blah 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 they literally went after everyone inside everyone um and there was manual penalties like freaking dished out left right center anyone that had ever you know what i mean uh because like these kind of websites you create a profile of who you are and blah 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 um <laughs> So yeah, that's based, that site now is a, a, a no follow to Googlebot. That's it still exists, but it's a no follow to Googlebot. It's a no access. So my, what I'm trying to get at here is like, I think these Slack channels, unless someone's invited a Googler unknowingly, and we do know that some of these boys do pose as someone else just to investigate shit. Um, so yeah, like, I mean, I would say that's pretty safe thing but look yeah ultimately everybody is you know unless the slack channel grows ultimately everyone will exchange the link somewhere or another down the road but if people are looking for easy stuff that's where they're going to look and you just said guest posts which again is easy stuff and that's what google knows about already so i think if they see something like that it's not going to be high quality uh, in any way, shape, or form, and Google's probably just going to discount it anyway. I don't think they'll have access to the Slack channel, but they'll see a pattern, and they'll just—it's not, you know. Nowadays, they don't—they don't lash out, you know, manual penalties willy-nilly. They still do, um, but it would take you a fair while on a Slack exchange to work through the entire Slack exchange to get enough reciprocal links to get yourself manually penalized they would just basically be discounted from day one um yeah so why even bother you know this is my whole point if you're going to create content to chuck on someone else's site just because it's a crap site and you think i'm going to get a link out of it just just put it on your own man it's going to do far more good to your own site wise words tim yep wise words that's you um, you bet you wish you'd said that david <laughs> yeah i yes yeah it's it's uh the, the the real thing is the strategy of getting a word in, in edgeways <laughs> <laughs> all right here we are nicholas johnson asked the question how important is it to have a keyword in meta description and alt text um is it worth taking the time um i have a, an online store uh 
Um, it's not worth um, explicitly putting a, a keyword in meta description um, unless it unless it's sensible for what you're saying, which it might well be. Um, it's just don't stuff it with keywords. Don't try to uh, to to get a load of leverage that isn't isn't there anyway because meta description is not. Um, it's not something that will help your overall SEO. Um, alt text. Um, yes. Again, it's a description um, for people with, um, with screen readers, people with problems with, with, site, with their site. Um, if that is the correct uh, PC description. Um, again, it it's likely to be there um, because that's what, you know, you're not going to put a, a, a picture of a pink elephant on, uh, on a, a page about mortgages, um, unless you're pink elephant mortgages, I suppose. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So again, yes, they will tend to pop up naturally. And if it is naturally, um, I wouldn't worry about it. You know, just just do what makes sense for, for the reader, um, as we say a lot around here. Um, so it's important from the point of view that you want these things to do the right job. Um, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference to your overall search engine traction i would think mm. what do you reckon tim uh well he's got, like he's got two things in there meta description is generally for your page and then alt text is for an image like or what did he mean both for the image i'm not entirely sure like oh, anyway. i see what you mean yeah um, they're two separate kind of yeah well that's what I, that's okay yeah. so let's look at uh uh both scenarios quickly for me uh is it worth going back for the meta description of a page um depends on the site size uh if it's a mahusive site and it's been built out over time and you literally don't have the time to do meta descriptions depending what site it is if it's a wordpress site and i'm assuming you're using some kind of seo plugin you just could enable excerpt uh which will take the first excerpt from your page and insert it as your meta description job done so that answers that is it worth like if you've got a mohusa site if you don't have a massive site 100 pages you may as well take the time just to refine that remember Unless you've got it completely wrong, a search engine will display that meta description in the search results. The search results is, depending on what's displayed there, is what a user is going to decide to click through to. So, if it's, you know, like, if you do have the time and it's not too massive, it's worth just working your way through pages, meta descriptions to refine them because unless Google changes them too much, that is going to be the, oh, and they really change them a lot if they don't make sense to the page for a search engine. But let's say you've got it perfect, that's going to help people click through, right? Um, now let's assume that that's for the description and the alt text on an image file. Um, well, the top tip is like this is the way I look at images straight off. Um, if an image is going into whether it be an article or a, a client site or you're working on a new thing, so firstly, it's what's the size of the image? I make sure my image size is the same size as the rip, the resolution, and to fit on that screen. So it's going to be exact size. So therefore, I'm already optimizing that image. Okay, that file name is going to be somewhat related to what that page is. So let's just say it's a 
it's an image on a uh, back pain for a chiropractor's website that will, and the image is a patient holding his knee. So the patient knee pain, right? That's for that image because of patient knee pain. The old text then when it gets loaded in, so already I've got, you know, something within the file name. Uh, the old text is going to be because now I'm not having to, it's because I've already started it. It's basically a patient with knee pain in chiropractor's office, right? And then I brand them always. Uh, I always end off branding them. It's going to be the name of the business, right? Because, of course, it's going to be displayed somewhere in search results. Another fun fact about Altex, there's been a shed load of US and European um, uh, civil cases uh, for disability discrimination because people aren't using their old text, which is for screen readers for uh, short-sighted, near-sighted, all-sighted, blind people, right? So, yeah, if you live in a country where um, disability discrimination law exists, you it's, it's pretty important to add that in. Um, so I think we've answered both potentials if it was, oh, and if the meta description is the, it's not called meta description images, what's it called? It's called, well, what's it called? It's called something description, but it's not description, is it? I think it's just called description, is it? Oh, right, just description. Yeah, don't fill that crap in. Don't, don't fill that in. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think... We may have answered all potentials here. <laughs> you just pick the one you want, Nicholas. Okay, no stone unturned. All right, let's go to number number eight on our run list um, from Ab 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 Hi VM. Is it risky to get a backlink from sites that are linking to casinos slash? gambling sites and thank you tim for liking my answer on this one yeah i loved your answer jim why don't you answer this one jim <laughs> um do you think i should yes jim scroll down to your question have your question right in there and answer it because it was quite quirky <laughs> well, i'm not so sure that it was yeah, look, I mean, Jesus wept. So, like, is he, you know, so you've, you're you getting a site which is offered to, you know, I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know, you've done a deal with them or you've found a, you know, and you've just also figured out they're also linking out to casinos and gambling and whatever, whatever. Mate, you've already just answered your question that you're in bad company um and no why would you even want to associate your business with that yeah i mean google google what wants to to know uh, wants to find out if you're a respectable person to to accept mm -hmm. the traffic that mm -hmm. google what's going to send um okay so he's expanded he's just said oh he's got a tech blog site that has a category for gaming and it links to casino sites yeah. yeah. Uh, like, and then he says it's most probably a get black. If ah, uh, oh. see, he's throwing a little bit of confusion in there. Like in theory, if this was a tech blog site, and he said it's probably paid placement. Like they should be using, they should be stating that to Google. Like Google doesn't mind links. They don't mind you paying for advertorials. Just as long as you're telling them, you know, like what kind of a link it was. Yeah. Um, I don't know, mate. I still, like if I... If somebody said, hey, do you want to write an article for this tech site, uh, but in our marketing section on something new, um, 
I don't know. You know, well, that's different because they approach you to write for them. You know, would you be interested? Blah 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 blah. Or doing a webinar. That's different. I'm guessing you've approached them. Um, so it's a totally different scenario in that sense. I don't know. It's already made you uneasy, mate, just by thinking, like, just by coming across it. So if it's go with your gut feeling, it's already made you uneasy because you're already asking this question. So I would probably say no. Like, unless they've rel, um, should it, what is it? Rel sponsored. Or is it sponsored or promoted? It's rel UGC. I think it's is promoted, it, isn't it? Is it promoted? But it may not be. Mm. Yes. It's well, one of the well, oh, sure, but I, I yeah, yeah. I, I wonder whether this is worth worrying about if it's just one. But if you're gonna make a, a habit of it, um and um talk to lots of dubious sites along these lines, uh then you may well find that you're uh, in the poo, shall we say. Uh, but I'm not sure that one um, dubious link is going to cause too much pain. Mm, yeah, no, this is true. And this could be a good learning curve also. Go and get yourself a link from that site, right? And then come back to us in six months' time and tell us how many people visited and converted on your site from that link. We'd love to know. Zero. Um, all right. Let's um, um, we'll call it an answer for number eight and move on to number nine on our run list. From Anyana Wickramaratne. Uh, Wick uh, is it okay to use outbound links in service pages? Uh, and Yana said, hi, everyone. Outbound, outbound links are usually an indication that the content is high quality and trustworthy as it links out to other high quality and relevant content on third party websites. Is it OK to use outbound links, outbound links in service pages as well, or will it affect the search intent? This, these people are killing me. They're killing me, man. I don't know what you people are freaking reading. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Cut, like, calm down, Tim. Tim. Like, what are they reading? Like, have they gone back through page 457 in the search results to find something that was written in 1982? I'm like, okay, let's, let's just break this down into logic here. Forget something you read that linking out to outbound third party high authority sites is good for me okay you've got a service page right and we're going to say service page so i'm going to say let's go medical backache okay and you are now going to this is about backache hi we are xyz chiropractors um uh, we operate in this town, blah, 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 blah. we specialize in, or well, one of our services is backache. You then link, or uh, maybe, uh, like, I uh, hope to God you don't link backache to the NHS backache link, but let's just say you do, or let's just say at the end, you link to the NHS backache page, right? So you're now literally taking your user, you've, you've spent time optimizing yep. your site, you've spent time building content for Backache, right? So you've built videos, content, you've got uh, how to prevent Backache driving, how to prevent Backache flying, how to prevent Backache working from home during COVID. This user, you've done all of that, you all went to link to your freaking service page. This user has now found you for backache and you've just sent them away. So long since we've seen waving arms. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you totally, Tim. It's mental. Um, mental. <laughs> yeah, you, you've, you've got to consider where yeah. these people are and how close they are to actually inquiring or 
making a, a purchase doing something that's going to be worth something to you uh, and as tim says if you have a an outgoing link in that uh, in that environment you've got a chance of losing a um, a percentage of people who are uh, potentially just, hot to trot it's like uh hey buy these skinny jeans you've invested all this time and effort on getting your skinny jeans into uh, the first top five search results for skinny jeans. And then they land on your product and then you go, hey, but, you know, look at this Amazon skinny jean page where they can buy it for 10% cheaper. <laughs> Way to commit business suicide. Go for it. Yeah. And, you know, the, the process of getting them to this page, you know, you, you may have written umpteen blog posts about this uh, and one of them has attracted um, a potential client um, and they've gone and they've looked around your website and they like your content about uh oh we're going to be mm -hmm. able to to stop do you send them to It's either me or, or you, David, but one of us is freezing. I think it could be David. I'm quite warm. Yeah. Oh. It, it's okay. It, it, you live in the UK. It's natural to be freezing. <laughs> um, do, do you want me to go through that again? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not going to work, Dave. No. No, I can, you know. I, I, I may even say something similar to the first time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's call that an answer for that. Um, and um, we will move forward to what I think is. Yes, it is. Thank you for watching, Tom. We'll be back next week, same time, same place. Um, and um but before i go i must thank your people like stockbridge trustlow who you saw answering that other question just a moment ago uh, michael martinez christine hansen people who are just uh, uh, the girl malone um people um uh, answer these questions on the spot that uh, throughout the week and make uh, come and see our questions such a, a valuable resource so that we're eternally grateful. And of course, we're eternally grateful to you guys. Uh, each week you turn up, something of a record coming up. We're heading towards sometimes next year uh, our 500th episode. Um, yeah, amazing. Who would have thought, Tim? Yep. All right, let's um, press this, this button. Thank you very much. See you, see you next week. Uh, no, that's not that. That's not the one. It might be this one. Yeah. Go on.